welcome to Unirax Racking Basics, the first short video, which is designed for entry level installers and designers. We're going to cover some of the types of PV racking, some of the components, and common vocabulary. Modules may be installed either landscape or portrait, similar to the way the paper comes out of your printer. The most common way is to run them portrait like this because that way the rails will be perpendicular to them and they'll be able to catch the rafters which we are assuming are running north-south up and down the roof. I always talk as though we're looking from the south up at south-facing modules. Landscape modules are turned this way and we prefer to have the rails run perpendicular to them because that way they're attached a shorter distance apart on the modules and it's the most cost-effective use of your rail. An array is officially a mechanically integrated assembly. So that would be one long row that's all mechanically joined together. Array is often also used as a group of modules on one roof. You might have two or three arrays on two or three different roofs on one building. The attachment span is the distance between the connections, the distance between the L feet that you are attaching to the ground or the roof or whatever you're putting your solar modules onto. And the cantilever is the overhang at the end past the last attachment. With rail orientation, we're talking about the direction the rail is running. Low profile, the rails are running east-west. High profile, they're running north-south, up and down. This applies also with a tilt module. Low profile, the modules are one at a time, usually portrait, and the rails are running east-west. This high profile is actually three separate arrays put together so it looks like one continuous plane, but the rails are running north-south, the modules are landscape across them. When we talk about flush, we mean parallel to the roof, between about two and ten inches off the roof. That is still considered flush. We talk about modules being arranged in rows and columns, similar to counting. These across are rows and down are columns. It doesn't matter whether the modules are landscape or portrait, they're still rows across, columns up and down. A ground mount is exactly that, attached into the ground, not onto a roof. Continuous tilt is where the modules are in one plane. With our racking, our longest rail is 20 feet. So if this was more than 20 feet long, this would actually have two separate supports and just be built to look like one continuous tilt. The big advantage of continuous tilt is you don't have to be concerned about the shadow spacing. They're not shading each other. Sawtooth tilt is the opposite. They are one row at a time and there is a gap between tilted modules to allow for shadow spacing. And reverse tilt. Reverse tilt is not recommended, engineered, or warranted at Unirac. What happens here is any wind from the north is going to be stopped by the building and the roof. That energy is going somewhere and a lot of it is going to be slamming into the back of those modules. You're asking for trouble. Please do not install reverse tilts. When you are Installing your array on a roof, you can see that these modules are portrait, the rails are east-west. The mid clamps fit like this between the modules. So that little tongue there is actually giving the quarter inch spacing, which is also what's needed for the bolt. And they are parallel to the length of the module. The end clamps are somewhat similar, and we like you to leave a half inch gap at the end of the rail so that this end clamp is not right on the edge. For bonding, the sharp points on the mid clamp bite into the module frame and bond the modules and the rail together. 
The splice bars are also bonded. Please note that you have to use the correct torques on any of these to be approved under UL 2703 and for the inspector to be happy with you. And our L feet have a bonding T-bolt as well. Note that there is a slot in our T-bolts that indicates when the head of the T-bolt is seated correctly. Attachments to the roof can be L-foot direct. You could lag this into the rafter. We do want you to attach into a structural member. So you could lag your L-foot directly into the rafter, or you could sit your L-foot up on top of a standoff, and that gets lagged into the rafter, and a flashing is put down over this standoff. So it ends up like that. You've raised your modules off the roof, which can be an advantage because in very hot weather, the voltage drops. So you want to keep them cooled off a bit with air underneath if possible. Another option is just to use our L foot on the flat flashing. And this tucks underneath the shingle above and provides a way for the water to be drained off the roof. And then we also do a tile hook, which is for either a Spanish tile or a fairly thick concrete tile, gets it up and over. The L foot sits on top of the tile hook. All attachments should be into a structural member. And this is a great example of what I hope they discovered and went back and lagged into the rafter as well. Metal on the roof is going to expand and contract. We say that you should put no more than 40 feet of rail on the roof continuously. And then you have to allow for expansion. An expansion joint is basically stop the rail, move over half an inch and start again. You may not put a module over the top because that would stop it from expanding and contracting. And you are not required to, but it's good practice to put a splice bar in, but only attach it on one side. That will stop the rail from moving up and down the roof laterally and looking untidy, but it will still allow it to expand in and out. This splice bar used in this way is not bonding the rail because it's not attached to this one. So you will have to jump her across that with bare copper wire or a braid. This is bent so that it can still expand and contract. Thank you for attending this first webinar. We have a second one with engineering principles and system grounding. Please check all our webinars and information at unirac.com. And if you have any questions, email us at info at unirac.com.